This is a quick demo of Ant's Memory Profiler. I'm going to walk you through finding the cause of a memory leak in a simple demo application. It's a little WinForms app that connects to a database and runs queries, and we think it has a memory leak because the memory usage seems quite high. To start off, we'll open the profiler. The startup screen shows your recent profiling sessions, so you can rerun those quickly, but we'll kick off a new one for this. You can profile lots of application types. This one is a desktop executable. If your app uses unmanaged memory, you can profile that too. So we just browse to the program and start profiling. Ant starts the app and immediately shows us the memory usage in the timeline. Profiling is based on comparing memory snapshots, so we'll always start by taking a baseline when the app is in a fairly idle state. Once we've got a baseline snapshot, we perform the actions that cause the memory problem and take snapshots to compare before and after. In this case, that's firing queries at the database. You can see the memory usage climb sharply on the timeline, and then it just levels off. We'd probably want that to fall, so something doesn't look quite right here. Once I've closed the window, usage is still high too, so we'll take a snapshot here. And then, as you can see, Ants shows us the comparison. The graphs here give a basic overview. We can see the size of the live objects, some info on fragmentation, how the .NET and unmanaged memory is being used, and the list of the largest classes. There are a couple of interesting things here. We've seen a fairly large rise in memory usage between the snapshots, and there's quite a bit of fragmentation. Both of those can cause problems. There's also a lot of memory being used in the Gen 2 heap, and that can mean that things are being held on to for too long. The string class there is pretty large, and if we go to the class list, we can see that it's also grown massively between the snapshots. To confirm that this is the problem, we take a look at the instance categorizer. This shows us instances of the string class on the same path to the GC root. In this case, 31 megabytes are being held, and if we have a quick look at the individual instances on this path, we see all the data that was returned by the query. None of this stuff should still be in memory after we close the window, so why was it retained? Clicking the instance retention graph for one of these gives us a picture of what's going on. We can see the chain of references to system.string that are preventing garbage collection. You read this bottom to top looking for unexpected references or anything out of place. And in this case, we can see that the string is being held onto by query form, even though that should have been released from memory. Looking a little further up, the graph is telling us the query form is being held in memory by connect form via an event handler on the connect form's foreground field. That's probably the problem. So at this point, we dig into our code and find that foregrounded event, and we make sure that it's unregistered. That should fix the leak, and to make sure that it's gone, we then quickly rerun the profiling session from the startup screen. So as you can see, it's quite easy to track down the source of memory leaks with the memory profiler.